Hi everyone, welcome back to Get A Brood. So today we're going to look at what's required if you're interested in starting a microbrewery in the UK or Ireland. Get a brood of a lot of experience in this. We've installed in the region of 20 breweries now and we have some really successful customers making some incredible beer. I'm gonna break this down into eight points and go through them step by step. First point has to be your business plan. When I co-founded our first brewery in 2014, we had a business plan. Um, was, wasn't that detailed and I guess we've learned a lot since then. So last year we did um, our brewery at Get A Brood and did a business plan on that put a lot of effort into it this time from the experience that we gained from the previous um, operational brewery that we started. So it's really critically important that you document your vision and go through, you can get, if, if you want a business plan template, don't hesitate to reach out. We can assist with this, but you know, what are the principles of your business? What are the aims of your business? Are you going to look at a, you know, an analysis of what's going on in your area um, and by analysis I mean that would include a SWOT analysis which is just looking at all the other breweries that are there and what the strengths and advantages they have and what their weaknesses are so that you can really assess you know if there's a requirement for a brewery in your area and it's going to change from location to location. Uh, consumption rates in beer are going to be different in Ireland as they are in the UK, as they are in other parts of Europe and the rest of the world. So the business plan, I find it really useful to use it as a means to dump your thoughts onto a document and to look at short, mid and long term solutions and plans. What's your aim? Um, look at everything from the location to the finances to you know what style of beers you're going to make how much beer you're going to make how to cost those beers out so a lot of home brewers come to us interested in, in scaling up to becoming professional brewers and the price that a home brewer pays for ingredients obviously is going to be different than it is for a, a commercial brewery because they're going to be buying in bulk in full pallets as opposed to maybe buying a kilogram or five kilograms at a malt at a time in the same with hops, key points, company values, core principles, um, what way are you going to market and advertise it, who are your target audience, um, information on your business and you, um, executive summary, looking at the, the aims and then obviously you're going to need a financial summary looking at the finances and how you're going to cope with with cost and that all through. Um, I don't want to go through this in great detail line by line, I'm just highlighting you know, information, it, it would be good for you to have, you know, if a bank's gonna be looking at this or an investor, or if you're going for crowdfunding, people are gonna want a bit of background information on you. So don't forget to include that in it. Um, what products and services are you gonna offer? Are you gonna be keg? Are you gonna be can? Are you gonna be cask? Um, and you know, are you gonna go down the route of working with supermarkets or are you gonna be um, self-distribution to only independent off-sales? These are all things that are really good to document at this stage. It's good to analyze your customer. So who is the typical customer that you're looking for? You're wanting to analyze what demographic of people do want to consume your beer, what age group, you know, are they male, female, both, um, and then look at how your brand would tie in with their needs so that you're not going into this blind and that you have a plan on how to target that, that age group, that demographic, um, that be your style lover. Um, other things, you know, market research is essential and that can be as detailed as you want. So if you and look at your local area, look at the microbreweries that are in the area, look at how they're performing, doing analysis on them, look at their strengths and weaknesses, see if there actually is a need for another brewery, or in fact, if you look at it in detail and decide that the, your area just isn't suitable, that it could be saturated with other breweries. Um, the key thing to remember in all of this when you're doing your market research is you know, to, to plan to make consistently high quality beer. That repeatability will have customers returning for, for more of your beer time and time again. Like you could reach out and do 
full-scale field research. You could do surveys. You could ask people to, you know, to, to do the research for you in your area. But you need to have an understanding of these things before you, you get into it. We know a lot of people that are passionate about beer and get into starting their own brewery and then they have to start writing these plans in reverse. It's always better to approach them from a proactive point of view. Marketing strategy is going to be something that you're going to have to cover in great detail. In today's um, highly competitive market, you need to make sure that you're looking at these things in detail. So have you a website? Have you an SEO plan for that website? Have you got all of your social media handles? Okay, so I'm going to move on to point two, which is deciding the size of your brew house and your output. Now, this is critically important. I've covered this point a number of times with videos that are available on the YouTube channel. We proudly distribute for Brewix. They are the best solution in the world for someone entering as a nano brewery or a microbrewery. And we would specialize in that field from sort of two hectoliters or 200 liters right up to 25 hectoliters. Once we go beyond that, we do feel that there's other manufacturers other than Brewix that are better placed to deal with that. But that gap between two hectoliters, 25 hectoliters, um, is where Brewix specialize and where they excel. So it's really important that you get the size right. It's really important that you make that size modular, that you can grow into it and that you can add to it if you need to. Now, for us, we can give you help in that if you come to us with um, what your idea is, what your output is. And I would be very open and genuine and honest with our customers. If somebody comes to me saying that they want to start a brewery and they're going for the 200 litre system, the introductory system, I would be very clear with you and say that you have to be realistically accepting that you're going to be doing all the brewing, all the distribution, all the sales, all the cleaning, just everything yourself because on that scale it only works if you're willing to be what would be like a one-man band or if you're selling direct so like a brew pub setup other than that we would say that the next size up that you should be considering is the brewix 300 so look the key thing with brewix and i've covered this a lot of times before is they will exceed your expectations and output and we can teach you how to push that um, too extreme so that you're maximizing your output and maximizing your revenue and at the end of the day look it's all great being passionate about these things but you have to have a revenue to keep the dream alive so whenever it comes to selecting the size and um, we've covered this before I don't want to go into it in a lot of detail in this video with the two three five hundred and then the one thousand and the two thousand Brewix solutions but be realistic if it's a small Brewix 200 you have to expect to work a lot harder and you have to expect to be able to do all of those things yourself, packaging, distribution, sales, um, not to mention the operational production. Um, the key thing is to get the figures in terms of output that you want and then we will help you build a system around that. Now behind me, I have a Brewix 500, a Brewix Plus and a hot water tank. That may only be a Brewix 500. It may just be a five hectolitre brew house to some people. But because we know the system and because we've designed this ourselves, we know that we can comfortably produce six hectoliters per batch. Because we've got the Brewix Plus and because we've got the hot water tank, we can turn around four batches of beer in a brew day on a double, on a double brew length. So 16 hour brew day, worst case scenario, we're knocking out um, four 600 litre batches of beer. That's 2,400 litres of beer going in there fermenter in a brew day. So there's always solutions on how to maximize that equipment to get the best out of it. It's really important that you decide on the output. So if you decide that you're just doing, um, say you're setting up a brew pub, you just want a 200 liter system and you just want to produce your own beer in house, you know, have you looked at how many kegs that output would, would need every week? Is it 10 kegs a week? Is it 20 kegs a week? So then you look at how many fermenters you would need. Then look at the beer styles. Are you going to want to make a lager? If you're going to want to make a lager, you're going to need extra tanks because to do it properly, you're going to want to age that lager for at least six weeks. So these are all considerations to take into account at the output stage. So your plan that we talked about at point one will help morph and mold the size and decision in point two. But these are really important. So get them right now, plan now. It's fine being modular, it's fine buying a Brewix 500 and adding a plus to it at a later date. It's fine adding fermentation tanks as your revenue grows, but you want to have that vision mapped down now. 
So point three that I want to cover is brand and marketing. It's really important in current modern business climate that you've got a strong strategy and a strong marketing strategy. And I would always say that your brand needs to have a backstory. So um, like our first brewery that we co-founded was um, based on a farm. We used a farming theme that ran through that and worked really, really well and allowed us to grow that brewery well. A lot of the local breweries, like the closest brewery to us at the moment now is Heaney Brewery. Um, the Poet Laureate, Seamus Heaney, um, the brewery built by Mal and his wife on the, the family homestead. So the backstory is phenomenal there. It's, you know, it's really important to that brand and they communicate that backstory throughout their brand repeatedly. But if you're doing your SWOT analysis, you'll be able to pick this up and during your research you'll see uh, the brands that are successful are those that have a great backstory and that have a good marketing strategy. Marketing strategy is very, very complicated nowadays if you're wanting to compete at a national or international level. You need a website, you need to have good SEO um, for that website, you need social media, you need videography, you need events, you need print, you need audio, you need all of these things in marketing in multiple different layers. So look, we have a talented team here. We have um, videographers, uh, graphic designers, we've got copywriters. It's, it, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. So perhaps you've got some good friends and family contacts that it can help you at the start, but be aware that marketing, brand, merchandising, it's all important stuff to making sure that your brewery is successful. Point four is location. Location is important for a number of reasons. So is it going to be suitable for planning permission? Um, and whenever we're talking about the point in planning permission, you're going to have to look at has it got good water and good electricity? And by electricity, preference would be that it's three phase electricity to power the large Brewix machines. We have options for gas and we have options where we can get converters to take from single to three phase, but in an ideal world, it needs to be three phase electricity. And again, water pressure, because you're going to be using a lot of water, not just for the brewing process, but also for the cooling process, that you need to make sure that you have a good water supply coming in. So location is going to be critically important as well for space. So making sure that the building is suitable in size um, and that's going to take you back to you know the previous point that we talked about about your output expectations and the, the size of the brew house so what height are you going to need for the tank so you're going to need 2.4 meters of height for a cct uh, tank that holds 650 liters or you're going to need you know 3.5 meters that holds that, that needs the height for a cct 200 that holds 2,600 litres. Um, have you got the floor space for um, contract packagers to come in? Have you got the floor space to put a packaging line in at a later date? Space to store packaged goods as well as uh, raw ingredients that you're going to need. These are all things you need, need to take into consideration. Now, if you're working with us and you're looking to uh, use a Brewix brewery, we have the ability to do 3D modelling and put the tanks and the equipment in space to show you what it would look like in, in your potential project that you're working on. So other really important things are drainage. Uh, drainage um, is important because of the wastewater coming off. So whether that be from cleaning or production. So depending on where you're located, it may well be that um, you're not able to go into the sewers and you may need to have a collection tank and take it away. It may be fine to put into the sewers as long as you have written good critical control points to you know, just ensure that your production facility is running without um, causing any harms to the environment. Now, there's solutions for that, really simple solutions, which we do here. You know, we would collect our um, spent grain, we would collect our spent yeast, and it's given to a local farmer, and he reintroduces that back into the food chain, and that, that's recycled. We, we don't use harsh chemicals here for cleaning. We use uh, chemicals that are good for the environment. So anything that goes to drain is simply water and there's no risk to the local wildlife or local streams or rivers or anything like that there. But 
they are things that you need to take into consideration. If you're in a city centre location, for example, we've done a couple of brew pubs in the city centre in Belfast in recent times, and we had to do noise and odour assessments to ensure that we were complying with local council planning applications. These are things that we've done here as well, and we've experienced with that. If you need assistance um, and you're working with us on a Brewix microbrewery, we will help um, guide you through that process. But location is important, not just the building size, but as I've mentioned, the water, the electricity, and then obviously there's going to be the rates, um, planning, you know, um, it's light industrial use that you're going to need, and are you going to be able to get that through a local planning authority? And these things can all be covered by speaking to your local planning um, officers and asking them is it likely that you could get a light industrial application through in that area and what the requirements would be and when it comes to planning you're going to have to look at uh, traffic reports drainage reports so we're talking about traffic coming into the premises drainage coming off the roofs drainage coming off the the brewery as well and if you do it right first time it's dead simple and uh, it means you don't have to keep going back and looking at these things time and time again. Okay, so moving on to point five, legalities and licenses. So um, in relation to our local market here, um, there's a few things you need to consider. If you're wanting to wholesale alcohol, you'll not only need to apply to HMRC for uh, a license to brew beer, but you're also going to need to apply to HMRC for a wholesale license. So the local one here in the UK and Northern Ireland is um, AWRS. So you apply for your AWRS, which is Alcohol Wholesalers Registration Scheme. This is all available on your local um, HMRC website or your local, if you're outside of this area, uh, your local revenue so just get in contact with them and ask them for the links to how to fill out the paperwork for those application process so a few tips for that um, AWRS is all about due diligence now I'm not an expert in this field and can't give um, professional advice we've went through the process so I'm just giving you a few pointers in relation to that get the paperwork right first time put it in once and then you don't have a lot of to and fro and um, usual guideline is that it's 45 days from submission and in relation to that, what you're wanting to do is you're going to put in a plan of your premises. You're going to put in details in the equipment, invoices for the equipment, letters of intent from your distribution partners that you've spoken to. Um, you probably need a letter from us as well to say that we'll be helping you set up the equipment that we're supplying you, the ingredients ongoing, including your bottles, cans, malt hops and yeast and that. Um, so these are important things. You can't brew beer without a brewer's license, so you have to go through the application to be able to um, produce the beer. Then you need to make decisions like in that application process, do you want to hold beer under bond? And will you be sending beer off-site under bond to be packaged? And when I talk about under bond, it means duty paid or duty suspended. So it's possible to make beer in a brewery, in your brewery, then send it to be contract packaged at another location. Now, you need the license in place to do that, and then you need to do an arc, which is an online movement to show that the beer is leaving here and the correct paperwork's on it before it gets there. But you're gonna need a brewer's license. You're gonna need a wholesale license if you're gonna to want to sell that beer. Then you're gonna to need to look at things um, like your environmental health. So contact your local council, your local authority, speak to your local environmental health officer. They're gonna want a HACCP plan as a minimum, um, which is showing that you're you're aware of your obligations and your processes and your flows and controls. So not only a diagram, but a writ written document. Again, these are things if we're working with you, we can help um, provide and provide guidance, consultation and assistance with. So HACCP is important. It's the basic level. And then um, say you want to look at working with supermarkets. So if you want to go into one of the multinationals, you're going to need at least salsa accreditation. And again, then larger scale breweries may want to go to the next stage, which is BRC. These are all just accredited statuses that allow you to go to these companies and say that you're, you've been tested, tried and trusted and issued with, you know, a number or a certificate to say that you meet that, that level of um, accreditation. The tip that I would give you is before you apply for these things, have all of your information on hand before you do the submission. So usually if you submit it right first time, 
it gets reviewed within those timelines. If you have to add things at a later date or you, there's further things requested from you, that usually triggers a new date and you can end up sometimes that it can delay your opening for a considerable period of time. Um, then legalities as well, obviously, um, if your EHO is involved, they're going to want to make sure that your labels are correct, so that you're covering the correct allergens, that you're covering the correct alcohol content and how that's displayed, that your label isn't um, maybe appealing to young children, that it needs to be relevant to the demographic that you're targeting. So these are all things to take into consideration whenever you're um, looking at what you're going to have to do legally. Say you're wanting to open a brew pub here in Ireland uh, it's going to be different regulations in the north of Ireland as it is in the south of Ireland and again different regulations in Scotland, England and Wales albeit that they're much more similar in Scotland, England and Wales than they would be in comparison to Ireland. If you're opening a brew pub for example you're going to need a license and um, that's a different type of license than just a manufacturing license and it may require you to go to like for example if it's in the north of Ireland here you need to do an application to the court and go through that process so you're going to have to take into consideration that you would have solicitor and lawyer fees um, to progress that application for you. Again in the south it's going to be something that's going to need to go to the, the local court. Um, so just considerations to be made aware of and you'll find the licensing laws here in Ireland are way out of date, uh, they're complicated and they're maybe fav favoured towards um, macro beer that are able to buy these licences that, that aren't issued anymore, that there's only a set amount in circulation. So look, that, that's a story for another day. But it's important that you take these things into consideration before you start um, spending money or progressing this, have this in your planning stage. Okay, point six, financing. Um, I guess this is probably one of the most important things give or take the business plan and all the other points that we've covered before. Financing is going to be really important because it's going to have a say on everything that you do. Uh, do you have the financing to do it? So let's look briefly at the options that you have. So you've got um, using your own money, um, you've got bringing in investors, you've got setting up a cooperative, um, you've got crowdfunding, and then you've got um, grants and funds that are available from government agencies. So. There's probably other ways that you could finance this, but that's covering the main five points. So look, if you're funding this yourself, you want to go into it with your eyes wide open. You're going to want to have that all itemized out in your business plan. And you're going to want to know what else you need to add to do that. We can help at every stage with that. And that's part of the package that we can offer in consultation advice. The next option to look at is investors. Investors are a very real opportunity. It's a very lucrative and profitable business if approached right, uh, starting your own brewery and if an investor is getting you know, very small single digit percentages off their ISAs or their property or whatever other things that they're investing in, you could appeal to them with a good plan at a good interest rate return and given if they have confidence in your plan and your equipment and it makes sense for them to invest. Uh, we've seen some large scale investment by private investors in local breweries here in the UK and Ireland and it's clearly working otherwise um, these guys wouldn't part with their money. Um, next point to look at in relation to financing would be cooperatives. So we have a couple of examples here in Northern Ireland. We have Lakata Brewery in Portrush and we have Boundary Brewing Company in Belfast. Both set up as cooperatives and use that as a means to get the funding and to launch the brewery. Um, I don't profess to know a lot about it, but um, there is lots of resources available online that will allow you to read about it and you can check out uh, those two breweries if you're interested in investing in them. So look, crowdfunding is another option. It's not something that I've ever done or that I'm familiar with. We have um, sponsored some of our local breweries with a donation to their crowd fund just to help them grow. Um, like we did this with Bullhouse Brewery whenever they recently did a crowdfunding um, round. So you can have a look at what they did and you can have a look at other breweries that are doing this. Crowdfunding is a, a viable option. It was more popular a few years ago than it currently is now because I recall seeing lots of people using it, but I don't know the reason why that's changed. So look, it's a, it's a viable option open to you. And then the other point that I'd raised was uh, looking at grants and funding. In Ireland, we have a lot of experience with this and have been able to successfully get through um, a high number of breweries with grants and um, extra funding from government resources, whether that be 
uh, leader funding, EU money, local council money, um, you know, even locally here, we've with some breweries that have approached Invest NI not only for capital investment but also for um, assistance with the planning process. So, uh, financing is critically important. So you're going to want to look at that in great detail. Um, if you need help with that process, um, we can provide help with that, and we can share our experiences with you with using some of the funds that we've used um, in, in recent times to give you some working examples. And we have successfully got a number of breweries through in the south of Ireland with a 50% contribution to their investment from these funds. Um, we can explain to you how we've done that and the stages that we went through to get to that. And also to fulfill your expectation in the north, they don't give away that type of money. Um, hopefully those things will change. Just to finish off on the point to do with financing, I have the Getter Brewed Brewery here. It's our brewery, we called it. Um, it was important for me that we had independence and we used our own investment to create this brewery here. Now we intend to um, reward our team as part of that. Um, so we're independent in the sense that our team's independent and that we control the decisions that are made here and we control the, you know, the, the P&L really. And that was an important thing for me um, and my family and my wife here that we were maintaining control and that we had our independence. So be aware if you're entering into an agreement with an investor, whether you're going for funding whether you're entering and setting up a cooperative or um, any of those other points that I've, I've mentioned as financing resources, that they can be restrictive and that you need to enter those with your eyes wide open, understanding the restrictions and understanding the burden that could be placed on you. Because you're going to have to be accountable to investors, you're going to have to be accountable to crowd funders, um, and you're going to have to actually produce what you say you're going to be, what you're going to produce. But for us, we wanted independence and um, we wanted to enjoy that journey, and that's why we set up our brewery ourselves. Um, point seven: We are going to cover consultation. Now, I hate watching videos where you get to the very end of the video waiting to be told good, solid information, and then they go click on this link to pay more. That's not what I'm about. I've given you like a, a great deal on a wealth of good, solid information from our experience for running this business since 2013. We pride ourselves in giving out good, solid information. We pride ourselves in building relationships with our customers, and we pride ourselves on the level of service that we provide. Um, we're personable. Uh, we care about our customers, we want to see our customers succeed. And we're very driven to improve the Irish craft beer movement here in Ireland and also um, to help our, our UK counterparts um, to be successful. So we believe that we bring a really valuable package. So if you're working with us with Brewix Brewing Equipment, we can guarantee you that it's world leading. We can guarantee you the best support. We can guarantee you incredible guarantees, warranties, um, and follow-up technical support ongoing. We can help with things like um, recipe development. We can help give consultation on business plans. We can help with giving consultation on buildings. All the previous points that I've mentioned, we believe that we excel at those locally and we're the number one choice for starting a small microbrewery between that two to 25 hectolitre size. We'd invite you to get in touch with us and discuss what options suit you personally. What we want to do is build a relationship with you and we want to see your brewery succeed. So if you want to dip your toe in the water, we do a monthly course. You can come spend the day brewing in here, bounce questions off me and the brewers here and get an insight into what it's like to spend a day in the brewery. We'll cover some of the points that we've covered, maybe give you a little bit more information. But if you're really, really serious and you want to sit down, you want to make an appointment with us, come up, sit down and we'll start the process moving and see if we can help you get your microbrewery started with Brewix Brewing Equipment. And if we can help you then, then we'll help you ongoing with ingredient supply. Um, we supply small nano breweries here in Ireland, the UK and parts of Europe. And we supply the largest breweries that there is in Ireland as well. Um, and we work with some of the most accomplished brewers that there is here. So we have a wealth of personal experience and we've got good assets we can reach out to. So we distribute for Chris Malt, Barth Haas, Lalam and Yeast, um, 
everything that you could possibly need for ingredients we, we keep here under one roof and we, because we work with these companies we have access to industry experts if we need assistance we pick the phone up, we email them, we get you that information. So let's finish with point eight, beer. At the end of the day, if you're wanting to open a microbrewery, it's all about the beer. It has to be about the beer. You have to do the plan, you have to do the hard work, you have to do the investigating, the building, to get to the stage where you actually make the beer. The key thing to remember is the quality needs to be the best that you can possibly make it, and you need to be able to do that consistently. I say it again, quality and consistency. There is no point in you entering into this market and making beer that isn't up to standard, and there's also no point in you making great beer one week and having a beer with a defect or a, you know, an infection or a packaging issue or a transport issue the week after. If you're interested in starting a brewery and someone likes your beer when you've launched that brewery, they want to go back and lift that beer because they enjoyed it the first time and they need to enjoy it the second time and that repeatability is critically important to success. So the beer has to be good, it has to be of the best quality you can make it and it has to be consistent and repeatable. And it also has to be a style that people want to drink otherwise you're just not going to be successful. So it's all great being passionate, it's all great saying you want to own a brewery and start a brewery but let's get the basics right and let's consistently put out high quality beer. Look, I've covered all of these points. Um, I've tried to give out good information to help you at home if you're considering starting your own brewery. These are just an overview of the many, many points that you're gonna to need to consider. We do have the talent, the experience, and the dedication in-house here to make your dream become a success and a reality. But that starts with you reaching out to us, exchanging a call or an email and then what we do is we guide you through how we would do this. Now, we're personable and we're professional and we value our customers greatly. Without our customers, we wouldn't be here. So we want to see you succeed, but you have to want to do this in a professional way. Consistency, quality, and the best beer you can possibly make, working with the best equipment, working with the best suppliers, best ingredients. That's what Get A Brewed bring. So thanks so much for watching today. Until next time, happy brewing.